Oh, hey guys. So we're going to have a little conversation up here about the pace of life and finding Jesus in those things. And so we're going to start by introducing our panel. If you could quickly introduce yourself, give me your fact sheet. Okay, my name is Lenora Lederer. I'm married to my high school sweetheart for 38 years in May. I have three adult children. Um, one is uh, my daughter, Kyle, uh, attends here. She's over there. And uh, she and her husband have two children. And I have a son uh, that lives in Dallas. He and his wife live in Dallas. And they have two children. So I have four grandchildren. And I have a younger son, Mitchell, who lives in Florida. And he and his wife are living there, but they'll move back. They promised. They promised. <laughs> and Lenora, what's your favorite praise dance? My favorite praise dance? Oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, I do have one. My grandson Taj has some great moves. You've got to see those. You could prove it if you want. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't tell us we had to do that part. I'm just kidding. Surprise. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Cheryl Polk. Um, I have been married to my husband for 13 years, and um, I have two kids. Um, my daughter is eight, and my son is five. And um, I run my own business, I'm a photographer, and yeah. Hi, I'm Ashri Boynes. Um, I am divorced. I co-parent uh, preteen, so he just turned 12. Um, I'm full-time. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. So I just have one um, full-time mom, and I work. I volunteer here at the church. And I think that's about it. Okay. Uh, I'm Rachel Nat, and I will be married to my high school sweetheart as well, um, three years in July. And I'm working, I work with kids, and I'm getting my master's full-time as well, and just recently moved into our first home. So, um, yeah, and we, have, we don't have any children yet, um, just a little fur baby for now. <laughs> Very neat. So could you, in one sentence, please describe your pace of life right now? Whoever wants to go first. You know, even though I don't have children at home, uh, very busy. Very fast, fast pace of life. I think it's just our culture. Um, yes, uh, having two little kids, I feel like life is kind of a blur a lot of days. Um, activities, my business, um, volunteering. It's, I think I just said yesterday, I don't remember January, wow. like at all. <laughs> um, I feel like the year just started, so yeah, happy new year. <laughs> um, in one sentence. I would say I, my pace is I'm a taxi and an ambulance, like all in, all in one. <laughs> so Perfect. That is my pace. I will say in July when we moved into our first home that I thought by now it, we'd be settled in, but it's February and I feel like it just hasn't slowed down at all. Um, and it just keeps getting faster. Seems like there's a common thread here. So what if I challenged you to stop and take a look around? What would it look like if you paused and took a look around in your life right now? What, would, what do you feel like maybe you're missing? Well, I feel like um, the biggest challenge for me is to shut off the noise of our culture. You know, you go to your mailbox and you've got all this junk mail and you go to your email and you've got all this junk mail. And so my challenge is to, to quiet down this noisy world because um, I feel like it distracts you from the things that God wants you to do. And so that's an ongoing challenge in an increasingly hurried world, a noisy world. I feel like um, a mom with two young kids, I just feel like I'm missing out on like the everyday, um, like the in-between moments. Like, yes, I'm with them from the minute they got out of school to the minute they go to bed, but it's like sitting on the floor playing a game with them or um, like actually sitting and enjoying t-ball practice. Um, <laughs> that's not a thing. That's really long. It's really, really long practices. Um, but I just, 
like I love every day with them, but it's like the little moments that I feel like with life being so busy that I miss out on. Let me ask another question. What if instead of running from thing to thing, activity to activity, event to event, project to project, what would it look like if you just slowed down and you looked around you? Like, what do you feel like, what are we missing? What's going on outside of our crazy lives? I think for me, just those moments at home with my husband um, and just sitting down after cooking dinner and having a genuine conversation with him, I've realized after, you know, just you answering it now, I don't, I can't remember the last time that we actually just sat down and had a conversation about how our day was or how we are doing emotionally or with our walk of God. Um, so I literally just realized that I, I need to cook a meal with my husband and just sit down with him and um, figure out how things are going with us. I can guarantee you're not the only person in the room. That could I hope not. Room. I hope not. <laughs> Anybody else? I feel like I um, am missing out on realizing where God is sometimes, where Jesus is in those moments of the simple things. Um, I feel like I'm doing it all. I'm praying, I've got my sticky notes all over my house with quotes, and um, I'm just being that perfect Christian, that woman of God that, you know, just I'm trying to show my son the right way, but I'm missing, actually, the right way at the same time. At least that's what, how I feel. I feel like I'm missing out on just the simple moments of Jesus. I love that. So, kind of launching from that, <clears throat> Okay, so I'm going to ask them to be really transparent, and I'm going to ask you guys to be really full of grace. Who do you feel like you are possibly becoming because of your crazy, back-breaking pace of life? We've talked a lot. Hold on. We've talked a lot about being a child of God, and we know that we are. But is that who we're becoming with the life that we're leading? I feel like there's kind of two parts to that um, for me. I feel I'm becoming a lot more impatient in life um, with my kids, with life in general. Um, but then I also feel like um, I devote a lot of time to volunteering at the church. And so I feel that with that, it's actually giving me a path to dive deeper in my faith um, when I'm here. Um, if I could be honest, I feel like I'm everything that I advise and tell my friends or family not to be. Uh, I feel like, you know, I say slow down, you know, get to bed early. You don't have to be everything. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do it all. I feel like I'm becoming my mother. Um, <laughs> she's a hardworking woman. She's retired and she's still doing it all. And she is in a new stage in life where she's like, oh, I have time, and she has no time. And she complains about it all the time. <laughs> um, so I, I honestly feel like I, I am, as much as I try to, um, f just like I said again, follow all the right things and do, be perfect, I, I'm not. And, um, and I am that person that I tell others to, you know, settle down and not be. Amen, sister. <laughs> Um, sure, if you want me to. <laughs> Go right ahead. Um, I think for me, it, it's turned me into someone that I, I, I advise, you know, the students I work with to not be. Um, but what's cool about it is that I come to that point where I'm at the lowest of the lows and I have nowhere else to go but to God during that time. And I know it sounds so cliche, but I mean, it, it's true. And um, in those moments where I feel like extremely helpless, that's where I find myself really taking the time to read the word and the truth. So, so what does that look like for you guys? I mean, you 
couple of you have said, it, it looks like going back to Jesus. It looks like fostering your relationship with God. But give me something tangible. What does that, how do you practice that? So for me, um, I noticed when you asked, I'm like one of the older ones on the panel. <laughs> I, I didn't notice that. So, so I feel like um, for me, I've been through the child rearing ages and that is a stressful time. It's a very stressful time. So I got over that, that point, got through the teenage years. Now I have grandbabies. So I have been fortunate enough to be involved in a small group for about 20 years. And it's been a, a nucleus of um, people that have um, been the same people. So we, you know, that verse, iron sharpens iron. So we have really um, gone through a lot of things through the course of that 20 years. We just finished a, um, a study called Be Mature. So, so I say all that to say I've gone through a lot of different stages in life, and I feel like I'm on the upswing in a, in a time in my life where I, I do discipling and, 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 um, and a lot of things like that. So I... I think all those years pay off, and and um, as we get older, of course, that's our our main goal is to be more Christ-like. So that's what that's what I got. <laughs> um, I would say I'd like, ideally, I'd love to have my quiet time with Jesus every day and make that um, a priority. But if I'm being honest, I, it's. It's something that I've struggled with um, for a very long time of just making it a priority. Um, I get up super early, I'm with my kids, I run my business. Um, so it's not something that I can say I am consistent with doing. Um, but I'd say my happy place is when um, I love to watch the sunset at the beach. And I really um, find that I feel Jesus in those moments and know that like he's there. So. I wish I could watch the sunset every day, but that's not possible. <laughs> um, but also um, my group. Um, I have um, a Bible study of women that um, over the last year has just brought so much wisdom and guidance and um, has really inspired me um, immensely. And then we also have a couples group. Um, so that's also a different dynamic of having the men in the group. But um, our groups have been life-changing. Um. I'm not sure. I guess what I would say is um, at night when I do devotions with my son, we have a book. Um, and when I do devotions with him, I think I find Jesus in those moments, which is obvious. We're, we're reading and we're, we're discussing things. Um, I think in my room, I have a list of, you know, wake up, um, don't look at your phone, you know, do this and that. I have this whole list. And every day I wager with God, I am going to do that tomorrow. <laughs> and so... Um, when I walk my dog, I feel like that's my moment also of just being able to uh, be with Jesus and just have that clear moment. It's quiet. Um, so between, you know, wagering with the Lord every day and making a promise for tomorrow um, and being with my son and, and discussing um, just all things of life. Uh, for me, um, getting into that routine of the early morning devotions or the prayer was also very difficult and um, a struggle that I faced was going through the motions. There were days where I did it, but then I realized, what did I just read? Did I read anything at all or what did I just pray about? Um, so for me, it was actually journaling my prayers, having a prayer journal um, that my mentor advised me to do. And there were, even if there were days where I felt like I was going through the motions, I could look back maybe three or four months later and see how far I had come, right? The first prayer, uh, the first entry I had done, I remember was, was extremely depressed. But then I look at the last prayer journal I did six months later and it was like I was thanking God. And so it made all of those days where I was hard on myself, or, oh, I didn't feel anything worth it in the end um, for me. So I guess my takeaway then would be even in this crazy, chaotic season of life, every season of life that we're in, finding that way to connect with Jesus. I was actually talking to a friend this week, and I asked her that question, and 
she pondered on it for a minute and her answer was gratitude. And that when she and her family takes her dog for a walk, she's able to just step back and see what she has and just be grateful. And that's how she connects with Jesus. I love the morning devotionals. I love journaling, but not all of us are wired that way. And I think it's so important to remember that Jesus is everywhere. Like we don't have to just sit down with our devotional and our candle and our kumbaya every morning. Like we can, we can go out in nature. We can see the sunset and find Jesus there. Like if Jesus is everywhere. And that same sweet friend told me about the nine sacred pathways and there's nine different ways that we can connect with God. And some of them that stood out to me are caregivers. My mom's a caregiver. And she always feels like she's missing her gift. And her home is a sanctuary. And she doesn't even realize what difference that she's making. And I, I guess if I had something to give you, one, you might already be connecting with God, but calling it your happy place. Or maybe you could find something that would work, work for you. Maybe journaling is your jam. Maybe you're going to be like the the journal queen I don't know but maybe it's going for a hike maybe it's maybe it's meditating maybe it's studying God's word I don't know what it is for you but I, my prayer is that you would um, seek and explore and try hey girls <laughs> sorry about that that was kind of rude <laughs> and try to find it so I guess right now I would just ask that that we could pray together and I would challenge us to be praying for one another. So, Lord, I just pray that you would give the women in this room a peace that passes all understanding, Lord. I pray that you would help them find their way to seek you. You would help them find their way to foster their relationship with you, Lord. We love you. We want you. We want a deeper relationship with you, Lord. We just, we just might need a little nudge, God. We just might need to realize that the things that we're already doing, you're already there. Lord, I just pray Psalm 135, 130, number five, over you, or over the women in this room. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. Lord, today I just, I just, I just give you these women. I give you their hearts. And I just pray that you would instill in them a fire for you, that they would just be seeking and hungry, and that they would, they would just they would find you, Lord. I pray that they would go out and they would find you and build relationship. In Jesus' name, amen.